Hello there. This video is all about sculpting clothing. Let's go over the theory and tools I used to create the robes on this goblin caster character. You only need to know a few simple rules to start sculpting out some convincing clothing. Take this example fold. This one is called the diaper fold. Check out how all of the creases point towards where I am gripping the material then bows down into an arcing shape. The folds pinch in where I am gripping and grow wider as they reach the center. Next up is a drop fold. I'm gripping the material at the top and letting it fall. Just like the fold before, all the creases point towards where I am gripping. Finally, let's take a look at how it behaves wrapped around a limb. Point of tension here is the top of the arm so all the creases will point that way. However, as the arm is bent, the point of tension changes to the elbow joint area. Many creases point towards the elbow area. That's enough theory. Let's drop into Blender now and make it happen. It's important to have the character at a stage where all the limbs are posed and have general proportions in place. We don't need any detail here as these will be covered by the robes. Pose and proportions will help us avoid going too far as we add the folds. First select each of the limbs, chest and hips, make a duplicate and then join these together. From here we can remesh all these parts together to form the base of our robes. Then using the mesh filter brush, select the inflate option to add some thickness. Use the smooth option next to smooth out everything. Now we can start sculpting. As we discussed before, let's think about where these points of tension could be. I think there must be one at the top of his right shoulder. We can start to build up the shape of a fold swooping down across his chest using the clay strips brush. Then use draw sharp to cut in at the bottom of the fold to increase its volume. Inflate is a great brush for bulging out these folds. If used near a deep cut, this will tighten up those lines too. These robes droop down loosely from the waist, so let's take the mask tool and mask out where the robes will extend. Then reverse the mask so we can use snake hook to pull the mesh down and out. We need to remesh the robes again to give us more geometry in the stretched out area. Hold shift to smooth this part out. Take a look at his right leg. We can imagine the robes resting against his calf and thigh here, while being pinched behind his bent knee. Draw sharp is great here to define the deep pinch at the joint. Then inflate at each side to show how the robes are bunched up at this point. We can use the pinch brush too, which will really tighten up those folds. Snake hook and grab are great brushes for moving and twisting the mesh to keep the flow of the robes looking smooth. I think the tension point of this left leg is right on the knee here. This area will be like our drop fold example. Folds pointing towards this knee, falling to the foot and expanding as they do. The standard brush is something we can add to our tool belt here using a low strength and building up the folds. Just like the front, we want to mask out the back edge too and pull this further down. I'm using a smaller brush size to add a little visual interest to the back. We can do the same on the arms too. While pulling out geometry with the snake hook, Try to keep in mind how the character might be moving. Then you can decide what direction details like this on clothing should be flowing. If we imagine his right arm being thrust up and forwards, then the clothing details should flow towards his torso. At the wrist, we should push in using the standard brush to give this area more definition. Keep in mind the scale you are sculpting for. For this example, it is 32 millimeters, which means we don't want too many folds. Just a few that are well-defined 
to show up on the print well. The back is interesting in there could be many points of tension, so we need to prioritize. I want to emphasize the right arm being raised, so I'm focusing on the tension of the right shoulder here. So all the folds will flow to this area and down to the waist, as the belt will also be pulling the material back. Similar to the inside of the right knee, the material will have a deep fold at the elbow and bunch up in this area. Things are getting a bit confused at the back here. If you place a few folds and things look a bit off, you can always smooth the area out and start building again. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. I think we can emphasize a diaper fold in the middle here to highlight the weight of the robes pulling away from the thigh and waist. Give your folds a hierarchy so that some stand out much more than others. This way there is a flow to your design and the viewer does not get overwhelmed. So armed with some basic fold knowledge, go ahead and apply these rules to any clothing you sculpt in the future. Thanks for checking out the video. And if you enjoy sculpting and printing things like I do, like this video and subscribe to the channel for more. Also, you can download this Goblin Caster character from my Gumroad. Big thanks to my patrons and their support. See you in the next video.